they don't do games like this anymore. When I first saw this box with its weird sort of radioactive robot hand on the cover, I instantly fell in love with the game and I haven't even played it yet. The cover in its simplicity is bloody brilliant. BioForge was developed by Origin Systems for DOS in 1995. Origin's slogan was We create world, and boy, this is some world they've created. The most important bloke in the development team was Ken Demarest, who joined Origin some time around 1990 or so. His very first thing he had done for Origin was this. And I don't mean the scene itself, but the water dripping from the ceiling. Then it was this heartbeat monitor, and by the end, almost everything. And if you don't recognize the game, it's Wing Commander 1. After he worked on other games such as Ultima 7 and Wing Commander 2, he got his hands on BioForge. Ken was the game's director, programmer and some sort of technical freak thanks to whom the game looks as it looks. It was a technical marvel at the time, for one, BioForge was the first game ever they used fully texture mapped 3D characters which influenced many future games. Not only the game team was composed of brilliant programmers and artists, but Ken himself built a rig for motion capture based on Flock of Birds that worked in real time. And by real time, I mean it could display captured motion with fully rendered and texture mapped models, create it in 3D Studio and all that in real time. That may not sound like much today, but it was the 90s. Ken himself said he was too focused on the technical side of the game and because of that the gameplay wasn't good. And he was sort of right, the gameplay isn't just good, it's glorious. The working title for BioForge was Interactive Movie 1 and as such it of course needs an excellent soundtrack and sound effects which were both created by John Tipton who was also used as a voice actor for one of the in-game characters and one of the computers. The game kicks off, as many games did back in the 90s, with a pre-rendered intro. This is Marine Dropship Ronick to control, making final approach for delivery of supply requisition B9 Stroke 3Q and prisoner AP-127. This is control to Marine Dropship Ronick. Landing platform is in position. You are cleared to land Ronick. Somebody, apparently the main protagonist, is being transported to some facility on some distant planet in a distant future.
After he's carried in, it goes pear-shaped quite quickly, he gets cut to pieces, apparently by main antagonist, while still awake, and that's where the introduction ends. It's pretty vague, but for a good reason. The Bioforge story was written by Jack Herman, who created an amazing cyberpunk sci-fi horror that makes lots of films or books or games run for their money. The game toys with your emotions through entire game, it shows you blood, it shows you horror, it shows you despair and madness, but the horror doesn't strike you when you fight an enemy or watch their mutilated bodies and body parts lying around, it strikes you most when you read journals that you found along the way, which slowly unravel backstories of other game characters as well as yours, and when you realise that you'll never be a normal human being again. Even though being a cyborg is sort of cracking. The game attacks your innermost emotions and feelings, it can get you goosebumps just by running about and listening to ambient music and screams of desperate prisoners. After the creepy butcher job, you wake up as a newly created cyborg called Lex in a locked cell guarded by some sort of medical robot with homicidal intentions. <laughs> After you simultaneously get rid of the robot and break the cell force field, you find yourself in a prison of sorts. You don't remember anything, you don't know who you are, and you don't know where you are. Who are you? What have you done to me? I want answers. <laughs> stolen my body and my mind. I will know why, or I will have your blood. Step by step you'll uncover what actually happened to you, why there's a facility on this planet or moon called Daedalus, and how, if possible, to get out. To find all the answers and possibly escape, you'll need to solve some puzzles, read journals and logs, repair some stuff, destroy other stuff, and fight lots of enemies. Bioforge is part adventure game and part fighting game, this combination makes it quite unique even by today's standards, a similar concept is used in Yakuza series for instance. After you get out of your cell, you need to find a way through a malfunctioning door. It won't open, so you need to figure out a way to bypass the door, and the best way is to search around these cells for something you can use. Maybe the fog this bloke so vehemently guarding can be used for somehow. Let's beat it out of them then. If you come from the force, I'm sorely disappointed. We should not be enemies. We should work together. I have no wish to harm you. Fighting is a big part of the game, and you'll be doing that a lot. Controls are a bit dodgy or clunky during fights. But let's have a look at other controls first. You move about using arrow keys, space is used for using items, enter for picking up and dropping items, and to run you need to hold down shift. There are also some shortcut keys that you can find useful during playing the game. L opens load menu, S opens save menu, inventory opens with I, options with O, and your cyborg body diagnostics with D. If you want to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat, take a guess what kid you'd use to enter the combat mode. You can use kicks, punches, head, blocks, and you can even do somersault. As long as I said before, fight controls are, are a bit clunky, you have to use certain combinations of keys. To use kicks, you have to hold down control key plus any key on the numpad. Lower numbers are for lower kicks and higher numbers are for higher kicks. Pretty much the same goes for punches, but you need to hold down alt key instead. It takes some time to get used to the controls, but once you do, you'll be cracking every skull in the game without problems. When you start in the game, you get to choose combat difficulty, easy, medium or hard. Choosing hard is not just about harder enemies and weaker… you. To make hard even harder, you can't use the same move in a row. Well, you can physically use it, but if you do, the next move is a lot slower. I really enjoyed the fighting bit, even though some enemies were so bloody hard, it took some number of deaths before I defeated some of them. Online games for pussies nowadays, you can't change the difficulty throughout the game. If you've chosen hard, you're stuck with it until the end. 
During the fight, you can get, of course, injured. When you take some light damage, you get a tad bloody. More damage makes you bleed more and you start limping. And when you get injured a lot, you get open wounds and start dragging your leg behind. Even fall down when you attempt to run. It's a nice touch and I fancy that a lot. When you get tired or fighting hand to hand, you can make a use of some weapons. A gun or some bloke's arm. Unlike the arm, the gun can also be used as a gun. There are two guns in the game. The basic one is not very effective against people with armor, but it can take down some machinery. Reflecting a shot of some surfaces is a good way to get rid of someone or something around the corner. If you don't get rid of yourself first, that is. There's also another more powerful gun that Lex calls conveniently a big gun! It needs a special battery you'll find later in the game. The adventure bit consists of picking up some stuff, using it on other stuff, and getting some stuff in return to use it on another stuff. Your typical adventure video game. You'll be solving some puzzles, some harder than others, but the most important bit is of course the brilliant story, which is perfectly integrated into this amazingly detailed world. Well, detailed for 90s. Reading through computers, journals and terminals along the way not only adds some meaning to the story and a creepiness of the place, but you'll get viable information such as passwords and codes. You'll slowly uncover who's running this installation and why, what's happened to all the prisoners, including yourself, and while you're slowly getting close to some resolution, you'll find out it's not as straightforward as it seems to be. Even though the game is almost 30 years old, it still looks amazing. Sure, they could have used higher resolution than 320 by 240 but still, the graphics are unmatched for the year. As I said before, Bioforge was the first game ever that used fully texture-mapped 3D characters. Moreover, Ken Demarest used state-of-the-art motion capture for the time called Flock of Birds. At first, the main character was supposed to be a human, but state-of-the-art or not, it wasn't perfect and couldn't capture smooth human movement, so they had decided to make the main character a cyborg to sort of compensate for the lack of better technology. Bioforge uses fixed camera angles on pre-rendered backgrounds like Alone in the Dark or Resident Evil. This system is prone to some small errors and may behave a bit unpredictably at times, but practice makes perfect and once you get used to it, you won't hit walls or fall from cliffs anymore. John Tipton used MIDI as a music format which was pretty much standard at the time. If you decide to play the game, don't even bother using FM synthesis. Just use some sort of wavetable card if you're playing on a DOS rig, or a software wavetable synthesis if you're playing in DOSBox, otherwise you're missing a lot. The music fits perfectly in the game's setting of some hidden lab place on a hostile planet and pretty much hostile environment altogether. Almost every scene has its own tune and all of them are amazing, John Tipton had done a cracking job on these tracks. For those of you who are wondering, John told me he used Kurzweil K2000 to compose the music and that he was influenced by a couple of factors. According to John, the most important influence was Blade Runner. But to be perfectly honest, I don't hear it there. Sound effects and voice acting are generally excellent and support the game's atmosphere perfectly. Distant screams of tortured prisoners, eerie environment sounds, heavy metalish footsteps of the main character that change with the material he's walking on, or Dr. Mastaba's commands over comms. What's not so excellent, however, are the sounds of actual hits. It sort of sounds like a cheap Chinese film from 80s, or any Chinese film for the matter. Ever listen to this? Oh, you die, damn you! There's not too much of vocal interaction with anybody, the story is not told through dialogues. But when there is a dialogue, the voice acting is excellent, albeit the dialogues with your enemies can be a bit cheesy at times, but fit rather good. There was supposed to be a sequel called Bioforge Plus, but the project was cancelled and there are just a couple of production videos circling the web. Name Mastaba turned me into a killing machine using the alien technology of the fix. Oh. 
Only the destruction of the fixed moon kept me from avenging myself on my creator. But the fix and I escaped the cataclysm. I know that graphics and controls have evolved quite a lot over the years, but the games themselves devolved in terms of gameplay, story and music, and that's why I usually play older games such as this one. Bioforge is one of those games that were forgotten in time, and to be honest, it wasn't the famous when it was released either for some reason. And that's why I'm here today to dig it up from the chasms of time and show you how good that really was, or still is. For me, personally, it's one of the best games I've ever played, and I reckon you'd find it brilliant as well. So stop watching crap on YouTube and give Bioforge a try, I can assure you you won't regret it. Or you can watch some crap on YouTube like my Bioforge playthrough, the link is in the description. And that's the video, if you want leave a comment and I'll see you next time, cheers.